Gathoni Wamuchomba, the member of parliament for Githunguri, has been vocal about her opposition to the 2024 finance bill in Kenya. Because why should you lead people by force? Why should you, uh, you know, press your own opinion and your own way of doing things to down people's throats and yet we are in a democratic country governed by the rule of law so i guess this is the time to speak out okay and some of us when we speak out we are not uh, applauded we are not um we are not uh, embraced but we are speaking what is actually happening mm. look for example look at for example what what is happening with our issue that i keep talking about our land I came here last year, you remember, and I said, you cannot come and force yourself to build houses for us and take away our land without even asking us whether we are comfortable to give you our land. All those houses, affordable houses project you're seeing, I want you to produce for me a project in Kiambu County where members of Kiambu County were invited for a public participation meeting and asked to donate land to government or to give back land to government of kenya to do to to, co to continue doing i mean constructing affordable houses but we we are only hearing there is a, a affordable housing project coming up in sijui Thika, coming up sijui in roiro coming and nobody is asking us what is it that you need oh, in my own constituency i i overheard <laughs> that there were plans for people to come and take over land that belongs to the mau mau veterans land that was gazetted in the year 2011 by the late Olen Timama. She considers certain provisions in the bill to be punitive and retrogressive for Kenyans. Let's delve into the reasons behind her stance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you told them that the uh, finance bill has, uh, is going to impact them very seriously? They know. They know. Mm. They know that we have a very serious proposal that is going to adversely affect and impact poultry farmers. Mm -hmm. One. Motor Vehicle Circulation Tax, Thony Wa. Muchomba has specifically highlighted the Motor Vehicle Circulation Tax as one of the contentious aspects of the bill. Allow me to come back uh, again here to unpack the Finance Bill Proposal 2024 in respect to the Motor Vehicle tax, Circulation Tax as has been proposed in the Finance Bill. It is my opinion that this is a tax that is going to kind of um, help the government to collect money that was apparently supposed to be collected by the tax or through the tax that was added on fuel, which you, Mwanainchi, uh, complained very hard. So I think this is a decoy for the government to continue collecting the same amount of revenue from Kenyans, but not from fuel, but from motor vehicle, with a, with a way of uh, you know convincing the local Mwanainchi, the hustlers, that this tax is not your tax, it's for the Wadosi. And that narrative of the tax is for Wadosi, it's a very dangerous narrative. And that is the narrative that is brought about by the political class. Now, this motor vehicle circulation tax is supposed to be taxed to every vehicle that is on the Kenyan roads. Not road rev levy, but insurance based. Whenever you're going to renew your third party or your comprehensive insurance, your car or your motor vehicle is supposed to be valued and you're supposed to pay 2.5% of the value of your motor vehicle. Now, this is the reasons, these are some of the reasons why I'm against this tax. One, the government should not tax any asset. The government should tax incomes. I don't know why this government is running now to tax assets. Remember, when you buy a car, for example, from Japan, you pay import duty, you pay stamp duty, you pay uh, excise duty, and many other charges around importation of a car, including an ABBA plate, which you are paying 3,000 shillings for an ABBA plate. After you have paid all that, the government also wants you to continue paying tax on that asset, which is already your asset. Now, let's take, for example, importing a pro box. It will cost you about maybe 1.5 million shillings to bring a pro box in this country. Upon entry of that pro box, you will pay 750,000 shillings to the government through those taxes and levies I've explained to you. Then when you own that car and the car is now under your name, the government wants you to collect money for them and pay them every year 2.5% of the value of that car.
So hii serikali na kusukuma mpaka hiyo gari wakati itakuwa mkebe, yani itakuwa depreciated to zero value. You will continue paying for that car. Yani hii ni serikali ambayo inakuja sasa kuchukua ile mali ambayo wewe uko nayo. Remember the spirit of taxation directs that the government only taxes you for the incomes you are making. Now having a car, are you making any income? I wish we would be given an opportunity to prove that I have this car, but it is helping me to bring income. Therefore, I can pay tax. But if I have a car that just takes maybe children to school, or a car that just takes my mother to a hospital, or a car that just transports um, um, uh, uh, children's home to school, you know, on a, on a, on a voluntary basis, on a, on a public service basis, why should you pay taxes on a car that is not giving you any income. This is, again, the justification of the spirit of taxation in this country. Now, what is the impact of this motor vehicle circulation tax to business community? One, he tax musiambiwe ni yawadosi. Wewe kama unatumia matatu, he tax itakufinya wewe kwa sababu mwenye matatu akilipa hiyo tax itabidi ya kuongeze na uri. Wewe ambao unategemea malori ikuletee maka, ikuletee waru, ikuletee cabbages for your business, Hiyo gari ikiongezwa tax hata yeye mwenye hiyo gari atakuongeza ile bei anakulipisha. So at the end of the day, hii tax sio wa wale wadosi, hii tax ni ya kila mtu. Kampuni za insurance zitasafa kwa sababu watu wengi sasa watakimbia, hawatataka kuchukua insurance cover na hivyo ni kusema itakuwa sasa tumefungua mabarabara zetu askari wa polisi wa traffic watakuwa sasa wanakula hongo kwa sababu ukipatikana na gari ambayo haina insurance service si utasukumwa na askari so this is a way of opening up to more bribery and more corruption in our, on our roads three most insurance companies will close down or they will retrench because business ya insurance itaenda chini by the way right now insurance uptake in this country is less than 3% so tukiongeza hizi pingamizi tunaongeza kwa mataxi it means then even the uptake will be lower na ya mwisho mimi sielewi kwa nini serikali ya Kenya inataka sasa kuja ku tax assets it means tukiwaruhusu wachukue tax kwa asset ya magari zetu kesho watakujia mashamba yetu and by the way i hope you know that there is a new land bill imeletwa kabunge la taifa ambalo linasema ya kwamba wale wote watu ambao wanaishi kwa counties ambazo zimetengenezwa kama municipalities hata kama bado mko kule kwa kijiji kama kwetu Gidhunguri as long as you are within a municipality your stamp duty has been doubled from 2% to 4% that is to mean serikali tayari ishaanza ku tax assets zetu wameanza na mashamba wameongeza stamp duty from 2% to 4% wameingia kwa magari hiyo ni asset na ukubuke the spirit of taxation does not allow a government to collect taxes on assets you can only pay taxes on acquisition of that asset like when you're buying a plot you will pay stamp duty lakini sio when you are dwelling on that asset or enjoying that asset which you've already paid taxes for upon acquisition and therefore as a member of parliament i i am opposing the finance bill 2024 on the basis of motor vehicle circulation tax which is oppressive which is retrogressive which is punitive and which is going to be unprocedural and irregular tuonane masaa hayo ingine nikiendelea kufafanua finance bill 2024 ambayo itakuhusu wewe she believes that this tax is unfairly burdensome for ordinary citizens Oh, the tax on motor vehicles affects vehicle owners and can significantly impact their financial well-being. What do you think about 2024 finance bill? Write in the comments section. Subscribe to our channel. Like this video and turn on notification. Thank you so much. Now guys, let get deeper. 2. Punitive taxation measures. Ogathoni argues that the overall tax structure proposed in the 2024 finance bill is punitive. It places a heavy burden on Kenyans, especially those in lower income brackets. Oshi emphasizes that taxation policies should be designed to promote economic growth and social welfare, rather than disproportionately affecting vulnerable populations. 3. Opposition to the housing levy. With the finance bill, 2024, right? It's one of those things that are making my Kamau uh, change color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a punitive oppressive piece of document 
well, that is going to make Kenyans' lives even harder. It's going to stifle out people's livelihoods in this country. And I'm worried that uh, if it do happen as proposed, we are going to have very serious uh, impact on livelihoods, mm. and especially touching on the the productive society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. The productive, I mean the people who are earning. Mm. Yeah, because there are double taxations proposed, um, and some of them are retrogressive taxes. Let's start with the main main ones. You represent Kedongori constituencies, very, very active, vibrant, agriculturally. Yeah. Very many things. Yeah. They're big poultry farmers. They rear pigs. They are in dairy. They're yeah. in a, let's start with poultry because you mentioned. I mentioned poultry. Mm. We are not very big in poultry in Gidunguri, but we are very big in Kikuyu, mm. Kabeta area. In fact, we have the biggest poultry market in Wangige, yes. where we sell a lot of eggs, and mm. in uh, Thika. Mm. And uh, according to this proposal, Eric, we have proposed that we are going to allow eggs from the East African community mm to come in to Kenya without any duty. So mm. we have removed all the duties that were there, mm -hmm. especially the excise duty. What does that mean? It means that uh, anybody now who is farming poultry or producing eggs in, in, the, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Tanzania and Uganda mm. can now freely bring their egg here. And allowing that to happen, noting that the cost of production in uh, Tanzania and Uganda is so much lower compared to cost of production in Kenya. That will allow more cheap eggs to come from our neighboring countries. And because our farmers cannot keep up or match up, what they will do, they will just give in. And this might kill the poultry industry in this country. Mm. Because there are no better equating uh, incentives given to the same farmers in Kenya. I expected if you had to do that, what we have proposed to remove excess duty and allow eggs to come into Kenya, we then have to subsidize a lot of inputs for our local poultry farmers, but that has not been done. So I see a situation where there will be a lot of prolification of eggs from East African community to Kenya and that would definitely kill the poultry sector. Please explain this again. Currently, there is excess duty imposed on poultry products yep. from the East African community. No, um, not from all the East African community members. Mm -hmm. But now when we do a blanket, a blanket entry allowance for them, then that will flood the eggs into this country. Now, Eric, let me tell you what will happen. Is that not part of the East African Common Market Protocol? It is a part of the protocol, mm -hmm. but uh, if we, we, we allow it to widely get opened without any restriction, any 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 um, taxes on top, it means then I can actually now go to Tanzania and my, uh, do my poultry in Tanzania or Uganda and still bring eggs here in Kenya. And that is exactly what is happening right now. The big players of poultry are now relocating, including some of the people we know that are in the executive and the presidency. They've moved their poultry farms from Kenya to Tanzania and to Uganda. So this is actually preferential. This excess duty removal is preferential to, to, to favor some serious investors who, who, who know what's going on. Eric, what is also going to happen is that... Yeah. that there are countries that are outside uh, uh, the East African Community Treaty and are enjoying other block treaties like the, Com the Comesa and mm. ECOWAS. Mm. And they have also allowed... Uh, what we call steep steep means um, a united states uh, stimulus uh, importation program where those countries allow uh, finished poultry products into their country mm -hmm. so there are countries within east africa who will access the products that are coming from europe and from america and other countries to their countries and because they are also enjoying the east african community uh, exemption, they will now be able to bring those products into Nairobi. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, so that means this is a new pathway we have created to receiving even products that are coming from Europe, mm. poultry products, but through shortcuts. 
there was an attempt about i think in january or february i don't know whether you read about it where there was a meeting that was done um and it was supposed to discuss the steep documents steep is um an agreement that looks at allowing america to dump let me use that word mm. to dump their uh, finished pottery products into kenya u.s kenya steep i want to explain what this document was talking about the ministry of trade held a meeting between the kenya poultry breeders association of kenya to ask their views on what they feel if they allowed us to bring in final poultry products finished when i say finished i mean when you slaughter a chicken there is that piece of the head that is not consumed in U.S. Mm. Mm. And there is those migus. Those, those, what are they, they called? <laughs> what is called feet. Migus. Migus. <laughs> <laughs> those, those uh, legs. The claws. Yeah. The claws. Yes. Uh, they are not consumed heavily in U.S. <laughs> so if we allow this kind of an agreement, the Kenya-U.S. tip negotiation program, we will allow America to dump their legs and their heads into Kenya. And they come at a very, very subsidized platform. They will definitely kill the local street poultry product market. Okay. Now, let me get, take you to that Gambia. That was a conversation Let me about, take you to Gambia, uh, where, where, where City took, took us uh, with the proverb. Mm. Or rather, let me take you to Senegal. Let me take you to Cameroon. Allow me to take you to such countries that have already allowed this kind of uh, business to happen. Mm the poultry industry in those countries has collapsed some of them has collapsed up to about 20 percent others to about 70 percent based on where steep found them so this discussion i'm not so sure whether the presidential delegation that went to usa last mm. week mm. whether they finalized on this agreement mm. because if they did then we brace ourselves to a diminishing poultry sector in this country in terms of accessing the East African market, right? Yeah. Right now, Kenyan eggs can go to Tanzania. Yeah. Tax free. Yes. So what's wrong with Tanzanian eggs coming to Kenya tax free? The only problem is that their trade, their, their production cost in Tanzania is slightly lower than the production cost in Kenya. So why can't so an egg, costs? So an egg produced in Tanzania will cost less, and therefore, if it is matched with a Kenyan egg that egg in tanzania will be from our tanzania will be more competitive why can't we lower our cost that is a question that is a question before we propose the removal of those duties to allow eggs to stream in from tanzania and uganda we should have first of all asked ourselves what is this platform that we need to give to our local farmer so that they can competitively trade or compete with those eggs that are coming from other countries right now eric i am a farmer i can tell you buying a 90 kilogram bag of dairy meal for a cow or any product that is going to for poultry in this country is actually very punitive and most farmers are running away from even processed dairy meals and now they are going back to their back backyard you know what we call cottage growing mm. and 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 how many of us can afford to do cottage growing i mean if i have for example 50 cows can i sustain to feed these cows from my cottage, from my backyard. Mm -hmm. I cannot. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the volumes of productivity, then the yields are also affected. So I am flagging this issue as a farmer that we may need to go back to the drawing board before we pass this finance bill. We may need to consider engaging farmers. And I'm happy that the poultry uh, uh, producers and breeders association of Kenya did their uh, memorandum to the finance committee of the national assembly. Mm. And I'm hoping that the finance committee is going to look at that proposal, <coughs> analyze the memorandum and probably maybe even engage further with the expert technical <coughs> experts <coughs> before making decisions on, uh, on, on that uh, issue of poultry. Oh. Otherwise, we are going to be <coughs> retrogressive. But, Moshima, this is the thing, though, that we speak of. When you speak about it from the experience of a farmer, that then contributes to public participation. And <coughs> as we know, according to the law, there's nothing... Well, 
<laughs> in word that should be done without the element of public participation. It is the farmers who participate in this conversation. When we talk about going back to the drawing board, the people who hold the paint brushes, it's the farmers, it's the suppliers, it's the folks who are on the ground who actually understand what this thing means. But is it really taken into consideration? And who has these conversations about these things? Before I respond to your concern, let me clarify what STEEP means. STEEP means Strategic Trade and Investment Partnership. That is U.S.-Kenya Strategic Trade and Investment Partnership. This is a proposal under the Ministry of Trade, Department of Trade, Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry. And that's a very sensitive document. If, yeah. if it's the ongoing trade talks between Kenya and the U.S. Yes, that yes. That's been going on for years. Yes. And uh, we were told by the U.S. Ambassador it's likely to be concluded later this year. And if it is concluded, then you can be sure. Some of these proposals, if they're not amended, then they'll have an There impact. are so many boys and girls who rely on abattoirs. Abattoirs. What do you call them? Abattoirs. Yeah. Abattoirs. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for layman's language, uh, slaughterhouses for chicken. Mm. And if you go to everywhere where there is a slaughterhouse for chicken in this country, there are those young boys who always wait for their the for the for the, the heads feet. for the chicken chicken feet and the heads mm. and the matumbos and the matumbos matumbo. mm. and and let me tell you that's a whole economy it is it is a whole economy it so is. if we allow us to actually bring those matumbos chicken matumbos and chicken feet in this country and they are going to bring them at a you know to them it's waste so they're actually going to dump that as waste here so they can sell as cheap as one shilling per, per feet mm. One shilling per <laughs> kilo of matumbo. Because they are actually waste. It's dumping. So what will happen to those boys of Korogosho? Like in Naivasha, there is a place called uh, the Fire Mario's Place. Mm. Opposite Fire Mario's Place, there is a big, big abacha where they do a lot of slaughter of, of chicken and, uh, and, and there is a lot of business that happens there. So what happens to those boys and girls, noting that we still have a lot of problems with the employment? Mm. That done. Let me respond to what mm. my sister has asked about public participation. This constitution that I always carry, and remember I'm the chair of the committee that oversights parliament on matters, constitution implementation, clearly outlines the sovereignty of Kenyan people. Article 1 of this constitution dictates that the so sovereignty of Kenyan people must be given the right space and must be allowed to thrive. The spirit of this constitution then directs that we must allow Kenyans to give their ultimate opinion on lawmaking process. And that is why we must have public participation. But I don't know why in this country we have taken the public participation process like a political process. And I don't even know why politicians are allowed to oversee public participation because politicians would definitely be biased they will skew the process towards their uh, wanted or expected outcomes so last year i did public participation not because i was supposed to do because that at, at the stage i did particip uh, public participation in my constituency is not actually part of the process mm -hmm. but i voluntarily went to my constituency and did my own public participation just to weigh people's opinion and get to know their expectation as my voters and they told me very clearly and very loudly that they were not comfortable with finance bill 2023 proposal out of that finance uh, proposal uh, uh, public participation i did i received a lot of uh, 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 can i say setback mm. yes i Slack. I, I, I i received a lot of <laughs> political Slack. thrashing political mm. uh, intimidations and all that but i expected because that was the mood of the country i expected that those that went for the formal public participation sittings mm. in uh, before the committee that is relevant that is the finance committee mm. i expected that their views would have been uh, um, amalgamated into the final uh, finance bill which translated to finance act 2023 mm. but unfortunately it wasn't and that has been the trend and i'm calling out i'm calling out the executive i'm calling out parliament because parliament must get serious and align themselves 
with this constitution. So this thing is a waste of time. Is that what you're saying? From yes. last public year's uh, activity, all this thing that's happening. From when last year's calls activity, for public participation when we're in the newspaper, when emails are sent out, when people are told in your wards, in your whatever, come out for public participation. Your, your the 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 CIDPs for county, for example. When we talk about the finance bill, when they say come and tell us what you think, it really is an exercise in futility. Well, I don't want to say generally across the board that this is an exercise in futility, but I want to flag out the finance bill 2023 activity mm. that whole activity was in futility because whatever people said 90 percent over 90 percent kenyan said they don't want affordable housing mm. and i'm sure it is it is in record but did we listen to them no 90 percent said they are worried about the added levies on fuel that was last year's proposal did we abide with what people presented so i am not going to generalize and say public participation is an exercise in futility but specifically what happened last year on finance bill proposal was not right and if that happens this year then i think people must go to court people must go to court and and we must align ourselves with this constitution mm. um i'm very disappointed eric you know, when I sit here as a member of parliament and I cannot be able to assure my voters that their opinions can be respected mm. and I swore to guide them and lead them using this constitution, which we are not aligning ourselves with, then I feel it's not worth to be a member of parliament. Oh, another point of contention is the housing levy included in the bill. Gathoni opposes this provision, which aims to fund affordable housing projects. Oh, her stance reflects concerns about the impact of the levy on individuals' disposable income and affordability. 4. Advocacy for Fair Taxation, O oh, Gathoni Wa Muchomba's opposition aligns with her commitment to advocating for fair and equitable taxation, she believes that the government should prioritize policies that uplift citizens rather than burdening them. It's important to note that Gathoni's position has drawn both support and criticism. While some view her as standing up for the interests of ordinary Kenyans, others argue that fiscal measures are necessary for government revenue and public services. The debate continues, and the finance bill remains a topic of discussion in Kenya's political landscape. We have come to an end of this video. We remind you to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and turn on notification. What do you think about 2024 financial bill?